In this video, I want to show you a new feature of Quarkus version 2 that is already available that will improve your coding experience and reduce the waiting time. It is called continuous testing and it enables us to use the dev mode to very quickly execute our tests. I have an example project that of course is available on GitHub, which uses Quarkus in this version of version two that is already available, CR3. So this will be final soon, as it says. And um, I'm using Java 16. And in that version, if I run the usual, what you're probably familiar with, if I can type Quarkus dev maven goal, then it will start up the dev mode, which now looks a little bit differently. So if that starts up um, the application, then at the end, it will actually ask now for some keyboard input. So that is new. So this is probably still familiar, but the last line here is new test pause, press R to resume. What this means, if I now am pressing R, then it will just start and run the tests. And all right, let's have a look at the test and what it does. Actually, now it says all tests are passing. That's already good. But what we do here, and this is a very basic example, you can ignore most of the code. It's just about this hello world or hello coffee response. And what it does, I have a test, of course, which is just a plain code level or unit test. And the test itself is, well, very basic. It literally instantiates the class and checks for the string. But that already gives us, well, a fast feedback of how we should run our tests or especially how fast we should get our feedback. If I change something here, let's do coffee dot, right? And if I press save, I change back to my command line and it already shows me, well, that now the test is failing here. I can, this was continuously re-executed. I can re-execute it myself as well by just pressing R. You see not much here changes, but it just shows how fast that actually re-executes the test. What I like about this approach is not really the continuous approach that it re-executes my test constantly. So I can uh, check this out by just saying, well, um, change something else uh, here in my test, for example, to exclamation mark, and then it very quickly will give me the new response. No, it's not about the continuous approach. It's about the fast test feedback for me. So for me, that is the most important thing because if I press R here very quickly, I get the response. If I do this in my IDE, and of course, this is a very unfair comparison. If I just uh, press run the tests, then it takes a while to just um, start and executes them until they are executed. This was like six seconds or something. Don't get me wrong. I'm a big fan of IntelliJ and that's unfair to compare it uh, like that because the IDE has to rebuild it. Um, but you just see this different mode of running my tests gives me a much faster test feedback. So what I can do now here, and I can run this side by side. Uh, now you cannot really read it, but you see the result faster. If I change something here, if I press save, then immediately I get the new response. Now I do the correct uh, change and now you see it doesn't look like it, but that's already green, that's already passing. It still has the old response here. Let me press um, H for help. And I usually do O for toggle a test output. So I see a little bit more. And now I just re-execute it by pressing R and the tests are still passing and it's very quick, right? So if I change something back, if I say, well, you know, make it break again, now fix it again, um, now it's already passing. So whatever I do, I get very fast feedback. And for me, that is the best experience of just building a workflow where we don't have to wait. I was talking about this in a, um, a previous video and this is just so important to stay in that flow experience that nothing makes us wait even just a few seconds. If I have to wait five seconds every time, that gets annoying over time. So I just want an experience where I change some code, I press save, and then I see the result. Of course, what you're now familiar with with Quark is if you've used it, this also regards just the um, output of my application. So here I just will see, well, um, this is the coffee response and of course, this will also change if I, you know, like change that response. So this ch uh, still stays the same that I get the fast uh, feedback here as well. Um, of course, now my test is uh, failing again um, of just changing the production code. So this still works. What I also can do, and that's quite interesting. I have a second test in my application that is not executed, which is a system test or integration test. The reason why it is not executed is that 
um, this quark is dev mode in the new version emulates what uh, Maven would do with the same pattern. If I call this coffee IT for integration test, this would also not be executed if I run a Maven package per default, because it is this pattern of IT that's a convention that it will, won't be executed per default. If I run this, I run it now um, in my IDE, what it does, it will connect to my application using HTTP. So it uses here an HTTP client to just go to that response and checks if it matches coffee. So now if I change this back to coffee dot, and then I re-execute the test here, the integration test in my IDE, you see that now it should be failing because the string doesn't match. If I want the same continuous and fast response here in my uh, Quark is dev mode, this also works um, because per default, what it does, it sets this Quark is test exclude pattern to exclude the IT. And if I set this to, well, blank, so just two quotes, if I basically remove the property, it doesn't exclude it anymore. So then all of the tests will be included. So it really depends on what you're doing in your project, whether that makes sense, if you have some tests that are longer running, that change something in the system, like some system tests. Um, assuming that makes sense for my project. Now, if I include this and if I hit R, now it runs two tests. And now we see that the IT is now failing because, well, it doesn't match anymore. So let's fix it. If I add the dot uh, here as well, if I press save, and then now it's already passing. Two tests are passing. The first time it will run a little bit slower because now it has to be, yes, it has to be reloaded. Um, that's the usual thing that, uh, of course, now my Quarkus um, application is reloaded if I change something. And this was still the old output. So now we see two tests are passing. And if I press, press R, then now two tests are executed. And mind you, one of it actually does the HTTP connection to my application. So that's really cool um, because then I have a more proper response whether or not it will work. So now all of the te these tests in my uh, project are included in this dev testing approach. And if I um, either wait for a change with the continuous testing or I press a button, then it will just execute the tests very quickly. Again, it's not that much about the continuous testing approach. For me, it's more about being able to run these tests quickly. Um, and this really helps me to improve my coding experience. So that is um, still an early version of version two. You can try this out already. Um, there's also a migration guide for version two. Um, for me, that was quite straightforward with my projects that I have where I did this already just to try it out. One thing that I ran into, if you use Qt, then um, this resource path annotation that we use quite often uh, needs to be changed to something else, to location. So that's something I ran into. Other than that, it was quite uh, straightforward. And of course, as always, you can uh, check out uh, the code that's open source in GitHub um, on this uh, playground example of mine, uh, where you can try this out yourself. And if you have something else that you run into, I can just recommend to uh, get back to the Quarkus folks, for example, with a GitHub issue or just um, joining the mailing list. And I said this before, I'm a really big fan of how Quarkus is developed. So if uh, some of the Quarkus developers are watching, like a uh, great job, because I'm quite often putting in uh, some own issues where I run into, uh, ran into some things and they are fixed very, very quickly. So even with this dev mode, I already tried out some stuff and uh, things got fixed very, very quickly. So kudos to that. And if you want to try this out, you can uh, check out the code here. And if you found this helpful, I would really appreciate if you liked the video. So thanks a lot for watching.